I'm Billy S, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're celebrating because we just hit my goal of 20,000 subscribers! At my last milestone for 10,000 subscribers, I posted the first ever Drag Souls video, taking various bosses from Dark Souls 1 and throwing them into the Drag Race simulator to see who could snatch the crown. If you want to see who took home the win, check that video out, link in the description, before starting this one, as there will be spoilers. Now today, as we are celebrating 20,000 subscribers, we're bringing Drag Souls back, back, back again! As 14 queens from Dark Souls 2 enter those pink sugar walls and strut their stuff for a chance at the 1 million soul cash prize. So, let's get into it with the workroom entrance. The lights flicker on, the cameras are rolling, and first to enter the workroom crashing through the ceiling as they're dropped by a giant bird, it's the Pursuer. This diva frequents her favourite drag bar, the Lost Bastille, where she's known to openly sabotage baby queens getting their start. After all, she put in the work to get where she is today, and she's not afraid to throw a few pearls on the runway to trip a bitch up. Second to enter, eight legs, each with a platform heel, is Duke's dear Freya, the bendy wendy of Brightstone Cove Seldora. She has a sugar daddy who pays for everything, and she's more than happy to use his money to pay for her drag race package. A social media queen, she'll sick her swarm of spidling fans on anyone who dares to question her. Third to enter, two monoliths rise up from the ground, flames erupt, and through this fiery portal, steps the burnt Ivory King. Dressed in his most regal shiny finery, the tips of his cape are singed with success. Once the premier queen of Elium Lois, he stumbled into the Old Chaos alternative drag show, and ended up changing personalities overnight. Now he's a cutthroat who wants nothing more than to win, but can he be redeemed? Fourth up, we've got Sin, the Slumbering Dragon, a close relative of the House of Dragons. He's the drag daughter of Calamite, Season 1's runner-up. And as such, there's a lot of eyes on him as he walks in. Can he live up to her legacy, or will his penchant for toxic meltdowns cause him to be hated by the other queens and the fans? At number 5, it's The Lost Sinner. A masked queen, she runs the Lost Bastille drag bar with an iron fist, making sure their entertainment is of the highest quality. She's a bit erratic, and rarely removes her mask, instead focusing on her runways. Nobody's ever seen her lip-sync and live to tell the tale. But as she sees the Pursuer, they acknowledge each other. After all, she's the reason the Pursuer crushes so many rookies. The sixth queen, with a chime of a bell, strides in. It's Velstat, the Royal Aegis. He was once a part of the legendary House of Drangleic, but when the Patriarch Vendrick was pushed out by his drag partner at the time, Nishandra, Velstat chose to follow him into obscurity. Now he's ready to fight for Vendrick's honor to prove they still got it. But then, the gag. Queen number seven, it's Raim, the Fume Knight. His two swords arched across his back as his eyes meet Velstat's own. Two old flames, a relationship soured by another woman. They loved each other once, but now this pair has nothing but hatred in their hearts. Will they ever reconcile? Halfway through, in walks The Rotten. Alternative drag at its finest, corpses strung up into a caged gown, a boa made from the hair of those who fell into the Black Gulch, a talented makeup artist. Some say The Rotten creates all their drag from scratch, but is it really just prosthetics, or is there something more nefarious at work? Number 9, it's Alana, the Squalid Queen, the current matriarch of the house of the Shulvergank Squad. Her fiery red temperament befits her fierceness as she catches the eyes of Velstat. They used to live in the same neighborhood, and she was always a little obsessive. Instead, she strides over to Sin, the pair having known each other from a recent Broadway production. Tenth up, we've got the Covetous Demon. Plus-sized queens can be found all across the realm, but none has the curves, swerves, and dance skills of the Covetous Demon. She's here to represent the House of the Baneful, as her drag mother Mytha broke a nail and couldn't be here instead. 
the wild card of the season, but the wild card of Lord Dran won season one, so don't count her out. Number 11, one of the big gags of the season, an explosion rocks the workroom, as Aldia, scholar of the first sin, materializes in the plane of the living. Not much is known about Aldia beyond his skill at drag and his experiments to become the best drag queen in the world. But after one search, he vanished and shows up only at important events to secure his legacy. Then in walks number 12, the BBL of the season, that's Brazilian butt lift for those not in the know, the old Iron King is next. Fiery, demonic, and with the sexiest cakes known to mankind, I'm not joking, look it up, his in-game model is a party in the back. He once ran the Iron Keep, but after declaring bankruptcy and losing his kingdom, his entire persona shifted, embracing the chaos and that juicy booty. Number 13, Sir Alon is next, immediately catching the attention of the old Iron King. Part of why the Iron Keep failed as a business was because Sir Alon was his business partner, and upon pulling out of the business for personal matters, the club went downhill. Alon, meanwhile, is running a successful modeling studio, training young people to be Alon Knights and walk that walk. And lastly, the final queen to enter, it's Nashandra, Queen of Drangleic. The one who forced Vendrick into hiding, who's been manipulating the drag scene for years, and yet she can back up her mannerisms with the fierceness of a matriarch. Not a single person in that room likes her, but you can't help but respect her as she glides towards the gaggle of queens. Thus, we have our 14 queens, and in walks RuPaul. My queens! For today's maxi challenge, I want to know about you. You have to bring it to the runway with two sickening looks. First look, signature drag. Tell us who you are. Second look, who's your queen? A look based on the one who inspires you. The queens all begin to unpack, finding their spots, filtering off into their groups, getting their two looks ready for the runway. After all, these were all brought from home, so there's no excuse to look a hot boo-boo mess. On the runway, to nobody's surprise, it's Nishandra who is slaying the challenge, the first look being a gothic, morbid, skeletal mesh gown with long, strong shoulders, while her second look is based on the Mother of the Abyss, Manus, Miss Congeniality from Season 1. Of the rest of the cast, Fume Knight, Seralon, Aldia, Sin, and the Burnt Ivory King all have great performances on the runway, while the rest all did just good, not a single flop tonight. And that's reflected in the judging, as Rue announces, For the first time in Drag Soul's history, nobody is going home in tonight's premiere, but there will still be a challenge winner. Nashandra, Suralon, Fume Knight, you represent the tops of the week. The rest of you are safe. There's a pause, Rue glancing at each of the queens before settling on. Nishandra, congratulations! You're the winner of this week's challenge! You've won the key to the blacksmith's house in Majula. Do with it as you will, darling. As if proving her power, Nishandra strides to the back of the stage, win in hand, as the rest of the cast looks on in jealousy. But wait a minute! Wait a minute! I have one last announcement. The real competition is about to begin as I'm introducing a 15th queen to the race. Somebody I personally scouted for her charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. Please welcome to the race, Dark Lurker! In floats the angelic figure of the Dark Lurker, and the entire room is gagged. Even Nisandra is unsettled. This creature of drag was known as a myth, a legend, a rumor of the darkest clubs in the land, and yet here she is, a conceptual demon in the flesh, wings outstretched, made of the prettiest ostrich feathers, managing to hit demonic and angelic in one single look. Episode 2 it's a new day in the workroom, and Rue announces that this week, one of the queens will be the first to sashay away. But for now, a mini challenge, where the queens will do a song about the pit crew. Naturally, the curves and swerves of the covetous demon are unmatched, and she takes home a mini win. 
And for today's maxi challenge, it's time to act, as all 15 queens will star in an 80s inspired film named Kingsfield. It's a mess of acting and sweat, but seven queens gave standout performances. Alana, the covetous demon, the lost sinner, Nashandra, the rotten, burnt ivory king, and Sin. While on the other end, Aldia did awful. For all his mystery, he's got the charisma of a wet fish, though on the runway, his face kini look was the best of the night, while Freya and the old Iron King also failed to impress. Fume Knight, Dark Lurker, Aldia, The Rotten, Nashandra, Burnt Ivory King, The Lost Sinner, Old Iron King. You represent the tops and bottoms of this week's challenge. The Rotten? Congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge! You've won a controller that you can throw across the room every time you die in a stupid way in the original Kingsfield games. Burnt Ivory King, The Lost Sinner, and The Chandra. Great job this week, you are safe. Which means the Old Iron King, Fume Knight, Aldia Scholar of the First Sin, and Dark Lurker, you represent the bottoms of the week. But two of you did just enough to survive. Dark Lurker, Aldia, you're safe. Fume Knight, Old Iron King, that means I'm sorry my dears, but you are up for elimination. Rame Fume Knight cannot believe his ears. Him in the bottom two? He was just in the top three last week. This is absolute bullshit. Old Iron King, meanwhile, is already figuring out how to incorporate his juicy, bouncy BBL into the lip sync. He's gotta fight hard if he wants to beat a premier queen like Fume Knight. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. But there's a moment of confusion that hits both performers as the lip sync starts, and the song chosen for them doesn't sound quite right. Because in a twist of fate, oh no, the producers accidentally used a sped up TikTok version. It's a flop, neither performer does well, but even so, Rue is contractually obligated to save one of them, and so... Fume Night, Shantae, you stay. Old Iron King, you're more than just a BBL, and the whole world knows it too, but show us that ass again one more time, woo! Now, sachet away. And thus the world mourned as the eye candy of the season went home, and Billy S was devastated to see literally his favorite to win out first. Again. Episode 3, the queens stride back into the workroom, Fume Knight shaking his head as he sprays the mirror and wipes away the old Iron King's lipstick message, which was just a drawing of a culo. A fire was lit under Rame's ass, and everyone can see that no matter how good you are, you can fall into the bottom at any moment. Though it didn't help that during last episode's Untucked, Velstat began to violently threaten Rain while he was practicing his lip sync, an ugly argument that definitely knocked the Fume Knight off of his game, and almost succeeded in sending him home. Now it's a new day in the workroom, and Rue announces that for this week's challenge, the queens will have to create hilarious comedy commercials that roast their fellow competitors. Who's the funniest in this room? And evidently, it's Sir Alon. He takes no prisoners using his code of honor to ensure that he only spills the tea, roasting everyone in the room and the BBL who left the episode prior. It's scathing, but somehow weirdly comforting. Nashandra continues to impress, as does the Burnt Ivory King and the Rotten, with Dark Lurker and Fume Knight doing enough to show their growth from the week before. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's the lost sinner who just can't get a laugh with her self-deprecating humor. On the runway though, she stuns in this gorgeous purple gown that alights with pyromancy flames as she walks. Based on tonight's performances, Dark Lurker, Fume Knight, Duke's Dear Freya, The Pursuer, Sin, The Slumbering Dragon, and Alana, Squalid Queen. You're all safe. Burnt Ivory King, the Rotten and the Chandra, you were all a good laugh. But Sir Alon, you were a laugh riot. Congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge. 
You've earned a collection of life gems worth 10,000 souls. Ooh. Aldia, the lost sinner. Covetous demon, Velstat. You represent the bottoms of the week. Covetous demon, lost sinner, your runways. Well, they saved you this week. You're safe. That means Velstat, the royal Aegis, and Aldia, scholar of the first sin. I'm sorry, my dears, but you are up for elimination. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck. And don't fuck it up. The lip sync starts, and it's Radio by Beyonce, an iconic anthem, but one that ends up being a little wasted on this pair. Velstat and Aldia attempt to match the energy, but Velstat's heavy frame and Aldia's lack of being able to move due to just being a head means that it's a little bit of an awkward experience for Beyonce. But it's no surprise when out of the two, Rue announces, Velstat the Royal Aegis, Shantae you stay. He breathes a sigh of relief, knowing his little bit of movement got him a win. Aldia, scholar of the first sin, you're a star, but here the fire faded. Now then, sachet away. It's a surprise to see someone so hyped up in the preseason go home so soon, but that's just how it is. Established queens have a reputation, and Aldia's unfortunately preceded him. Episode 4, the air is tense as the queens walk back into the workroom, Velstat breathing a sigh of relief before he wipes away Aldia's mirror message, some prophecy about linking the fire, before turning to the group. And it's awkward. After all, everyone expected Aldia to be around longer, and by proxy, they weren't expecting Velstat to actually survive. But it's a new day in the workroom, and both Sin and Alana, well, they're feeling a bit on the outs. So in today's mini-challenge, showing off their fiercest attacks to kill the bearer of the curse, it's Sin who clutches a win, and with it, she gains power. Today is the Bitchula, where special guest judge, King Vendrick, must survive being assaulted by a series of suitors spread across three different teams. And Sin gets to pick the teams. Alana, Dark Lurker, the Covetous Demon, and the Fume Knight are all picked by Sin, Velstat, as the survivor of the lip sync, gets to choose his teammates next, picking the Lost Sinner, Duke's Dear Freya, and the Rotten, as he attempts to become one of Drangleic's Four Lords, which leaves Sir Alon, Nashandra, Burnt Ivory King, and the Pursuer. Nashandra is definitely gagged that not a single person wanted to work with her, despite being the one to beat, while Sir Alon simply gets on with the task, content that he's got a strong foursome. Sin's team takes to the stage first, Sin and Alana attempting to do a double act that goes south quickly. Alana keeps getting too jealous, cutting Sin off so she can't do her thing. Covetous Demon keeps going back to her wait for jokes, while Dark Lurker and Fume Knight decide to save themselves from the sinking ship by going for safe laughs. On the other side, Sir Alon's team is killing it. He plays the perfect demure lady, with Burnt Ivory King playing the spoiled princess to perfection, and the Chandra is the cold-hearted demon that you want to step on you. Pursuer is the only truly bad performance, playing a stalker who's a little too one-note. And the other team is pretty much a non-entity, as on the runway, Rue announces the teams are judged in groups, and Team Velstat, you're safe. Team Sorolon. Congratulations, you're the winning team. You're all safe, but this week there can only be one challenge winner. Nashandra, congratulations, you've snatched your second win in this competition. Ladies, this is how you do drag. You have earned a lifetime subscription to the Bitchula. The rest of your team are safe, but Pursuer, let this be a warning. If this were an individual competition, you would have been in the bottom too, my dear. Team Sin, you were the weakest team, but Fume Knight and Dark Lurker, it wasn't because of you two. You're safe to slay another day. Sin, Slumbering Dragon, Alana, the Squalid Queen, and the Covetous Demon. You are the bottom three of the week. Alana, you overpowered your scene partner, but drag is not a contact sport. I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. Sin, you were overpowered, but your material had merit. 
You're safe. Covetous demon, that means I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. Stop relying on that body for your jokes. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck. I know la cagais. The lip sync starts. Alana and the covetous demon lock eyes. It's mine by Slater. Immediately, Covetous Demon begins to roll, using her large bulk and surprisingly agile movement to bound across the stage. But in a daring move, Alana simply twirls in place, summons her scythe, which she slams into the ground before pole vaulting over the Covetous Demon. Anitra and Marsha Cubed could never. It's a show of dominance and RuPaul notices. Alana, the Squalid Queen, Shantae you stay. She chokes up, glad to have been given another chance. Covetous Demon, let the body hit the floor as you roll right out the door. Now, sashay away. Covetous Demon seems pretty cheerful as she leaves honestly, just happy to be here. After all, she can finally go out and have a proper restaurant meal, eating some of the expendable crew members of the production team. Episode 5, the Queen's return to the workroom, Covetous having just sashayed away. Her lipstick message is just her announcing that the local McDonald's is about to have a food shortage, but it's Alana feeling the pressure. Bottom two, while her sister Nishandra took herself right to the top, it's embarrassing. But she says, bring on a sewing challenge, she'd slay. Burnt Ivory King, meanwhile, is annoyed about Nishandra's win. He felt he did the best on his team and feels he should have won because Nishandra and Sir Alon already had wins. Duke's dear Freya just prays there are no bees in the next challenge, as the girlies remember how during Untucked, a bee broke into the studio and began to chase Freya, the Rotten, and Nishandra around the Untucked lounge. How can a spider be taken down by an insect, the pursuer jokes, much to everybody's laugh. Cut to a new day in the workroom, and Dark Lurker is looking to shake things up. She's not been living up to expectations, she was the gag of the season, and needs a good week to prove why she is here. And this week, Rue announces the Dark Souls 2 Ball. You must create three fashion looks. The first, aesthetic arena wear, a look inspired by your boss arena. The second, rags to riches. A reveal look that takes you from the dregs of the Huntsman's Copes to the 1% represent. The final look has to be made from scratch out of materials sourced from the monsters found all across Drangleic. Winning, more like skinning, am I right ladies? The queens are up all night attempting to make their third look as fierce as possible. Dark Lurker taking materials from basilisks using their false eyes to create these gigantic fierce shoulder pads. While Velstat is sourcing a furry inspired look from the horse soldiers outside the Looking Glass Knight boss fight. Alana is struggling to put a concept together, ultimately deciding to create a structural headpiece based on the poison statues of the Black Gulch, and having a shredded tattered fringe moment on the bottom. But the Rotten is also doing the same idea, only she's going for a more structured, tailored garment. Burnt Ivory King is struggling to work the sewing machine, having always gotten his charred lois knights to do the work for him, and Freya is finding trouble creating a look that fits her body. She's just so big and she can't use her social media filters to hide the mistakes. While the Fume Knight is basically covering himself in ash and showing bare nipple, calling it fashion, got Mick, you have competition. On the runway, Burnt Ivory King, Velstat, Dark Lurker, Alana Squalid Queen, The Rotten, and Duke's Dear Freya. You represent the tops and bottoms of the week. I've made some decisions. Alana, Squalid Queen, Congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge! She practically jumps for joy, having gone from the bottom to the top, and now she's on the board with a win. Velstat, Dark Lurker, good job this week, you're both safe. Burnt Ivory King, Duke Stiff Freya, and The Rotten, you represent the bottoms of the week. The Rotten, your look just couldn't compare to Alana's, and she beat you in that competition. I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. Burnt Ivory King, let me give you some advice. That outfit is not nice. Duke's dear Freya, you've got legs for days, eight to be exact. 
But maybe you, Iraq, need to step your pussy up. Freya, you're safe. That means the rotten, burnt ivory king. I'm sorry, my dears, but you are up for elimination. The room shocked. They didn't do well in the challenge, but the rotten won episode two, and burnt ivory king has been doing amazing the last few weeks. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck. I don't fuck it out. The music starts. It's Kylie Minogue's Get Out of My Way, an iconic drag song. And from the moment the lip sync starts, both girlies start to eat. The Rotten struts the length of the runway, while Burnt Ivory King pulls in Alyssa Edwards and hugs the back wall. But as the chorus begins and Ivory launches forwards, she physically pushes the Rotten out of her way, and the look in Rue's eyes is one of shock. The other girlies watch on, some shaking their heads, while the Rotten tries to compose herself from an actual assault. The song ends. Burnt Ivory King? Drag is not a contact sport. The Rotten, Shantae you stay. Burnt Ivory King tries to give an apology to the Rotten, but she shrugs it off, clearly fuming. Burnt Ivory King, you burnt brightly, but every fire fades. Now, sachet away. It's an embarrassing moment for the King, who finally begins to feel the weight of her actions crashing down as she walks off the stage. No exit line, clearly feeling defeated, it's a sobering moment. Episode 6, the queens return to the workroom, and the atmosphere is extremely tense. There's no mirror message, instead, drama. As during the last Untucked, Velstat and Fume Knight got into another argument. You should paint heavier to cover those manly features, Velstat told Fume Knight, before polling the rest of the queens about whether the Fume Knight should have been in the bottom three that week. The gag is that everyone agreed. In fact, Nishandra right now is shit-talking and saying that this was the incorrect bottom two, and that it should have been Freya and Fume Knight lip-syncing. Alana then snaps back that Nishandra was only safe, so who's she to judge? Maybe she should get ready to lip-sync next time. As a new day begins, Rue announces to the horror of most of the cast, it's another design challenge! Mitha, the baneful queen, is having her 22nd wedding. Could this be her Mr. Right? And she wants the queens to design a fierce, poison green bridal look. Dark Lurker is ecstatic, designing is what she's best at, and she immediately gets to work. But as the day goes on, it's Sir Alon who's making the fiercest dress. He's creating this scaled work of art that would really accentuate Mitha's tale. Fume Knight and Velstat are also working on similar garments. And this time, Fume Knight is going for a conceptual maximalism, the opposite of his ball look. Freya is once again struggling, unable to apply the critiques from last episode to her current look, and Sin and Alana are creating outfits very similar in silhouette to what they've already worn on the runway. On the main stage, Mitha, our special guest judge, gets to call the tops of the week, and announces the top three to be Sir Alon, Dark Lurker, and Fume Knight. But congratulations goes to... Sir Alon waits, waiting to hear his name. Dark Lurker! You've won a free bedazzled boss weapon from Ornifex. Well done, doll. Sir Alon is shocked. This should have been his win. Fume Knight's just happy to be there, and Dark Lurker takes her first win. Then, the bottom three are announced. Duke Steer Freya, Sin the Slumbering Dragon, and Alana Squalid Queen. Alana, you're safe. Duke Steer Freya, Sin Slumbering Dragon, I'm sorry my dears, but you are up for elimination. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Sin huffs, Freya stomps. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. The song starts, it's Into the Groove by Madonna, and Sin immediately rips open the hem of her dress, allowing her to move her feet without restraint. Freya, meanwhile, has all eight of her legs in high platform heels, which makes it a little difficult to dance to. And to a song all about groove, Sin begins to arch her back, slide along the stage, and 
batting her wings at the right moment to create a gorgeous sensual lip sync, it's like she was born to do this. Sin, Slumbering Dragon, Shantae, you stay. Duke's dear Freya, you've got two left feet and six right feet, but you've got your eight eyes on global stardom. Now, sashay away. Freya at this point knew her time was up. She was exhausted from the double design challenge, and she's just pissed that the other queens are all feeling justified in their feelings about the previous episode. But it's okay, she's gonna sick her spidling fans on them on social media. As the queens walk back into the workroom though, there is a shocked gasp, for a figure is standing there, fade to black. It's episode 7. The queens walk back into the workroom, but instead of Freya's mirror message, there's a figure draped in a black cloak. A message from Rue suddenly begins to play on the TV. I just think one of my queens went home a little too soon. I know you Drangleic girlies like to fight, so what's a returning queen to the mix? The black cloak comes off and... It's the burnt... Ivory King, welcome back to the competition, darling! And the Rotten is justifiably pissed. The one person she sent home is back, 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 back again. And he clearly hasn't forgiven the King for the physical altercation from the previous lip sync. But most of the Queens greet him with cheers, if only for the drama. It's a new day in the workroom, and the Burnt Ivory King is feeling herself! She's back, those pesky design challenges are out of the way, bring it on! And she channels that energy all the way into a mini-challenge win in a photo shoot, photobombing Season 1 contestants. Rue is excited, as for this week's challenge, the Queens will be hosting the premiere of The Daughters of Manus, the Rusical. A story about the hidden lore of Dark Souls 2 that creates the story we pretend to know before looking up a Vati video video for a refresher. The Rusical ultimately ends up being a major success. Everyone gets a shining moment, and it's clear the judges are going to have to nitpick to determine who the bottoms are. On the flip side though, there were some very clear standouts. Nishandra, Fume Knight, Velstat, and for the first time in a while, the Lost Sinner who all performed admirably. Even if Nishandra was just playing herself. No, literally, she was one of the roles. But it's the Pursuer who takes on one of the lead roles as Manus himself who enamors the judges. So much so that... The Pursuer? Congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge! The Lost Sinner, Nishandra, you almost made it to the top. You're safe. As for the rest of you, this was a close week, and we had to take everything into account. So if I say your name, please step forwards. Burnt Ivory King. Dark Lurker. The Rotten. I'm sorry, my dears, but you are the bottom three queens of the week. The Dark Lurker... You're safe. Burnt Ivory King, The Rotten, I'm sorry my dears, but you are up for elimination. It's Deja Ru. The Rotten is actually angry now, it's clear that she was only placed in the bottom because Burnt Ivory King did the worst, and they wanted the gag of them lip syncing again. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Go like and don't fuck it up. The Rotten pulls out a scarlet red lipstick, applying it to his features as Teenage Dream by Katy Perry starts to play. It's very much a song out of Burnt Ivory King's wheelhouse, but she's making an effort, strutting the runway before, but this time attempting to stay clear of the Rotten's space. But even if he were getting into it, the Rotten is giving Teenage Dream realness, strutting cute poses, and feeling her teenage fantasy. In my opinion, it's an assassination. The Rotten? Shantae, you stay. Burnt Ivory King, I brought you back because you showed potential, but you needed to stand out in this challenge, and you fell into the old chaos. Now, this time for good, sashay away. Episode 8, the queens return to the workroom, Burnt Ivory King gone again, but this time there's less fanfare, it's his second elimination, and even his supporters on the cast are glad to see his back. 
But as the rotten wipes off the mirror message, the rest of the girls turn to Sir Alon. As in last episode's Untucked, he may have had one too many cocktails, and in his slurred speech, admitted that he thinks all the other contestants are on the same level of drag, except for Velstat the Royal Aegis. And naturally, Fume Knight chimes in, because yep, of course he does. It's a new day in the workroom, and no time is wasted. With bated breath, Rue announces that this week, we're playing the Snatch Game, and here are the characters. The Pursuer will do Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, a Filipino politician. Nashandra will do Sofia Vergara, a famous actress. The Lost Sinner will do St. Patrick of Ireland. Velstat, the Royal Aegis, will do Valeria Marini, an Italian actress. Fume Knight will do Naomi Campbell, a famous model. Sin, the Slumbering Dragon, will do Jay Alexander of American's Next Top Model fame. Alana, Squalid Queen, will do Jim Carrey, famous American actor. Sir Alon will do the late Judy Garland of Dorothy fame. Dark Lurker is breaking out her Cher impression because she's Cher, bitch. Ho! Oh. Never doing that again. And The Rotten is doing Pamela Prati, another Italian television personality. It's a crazy lineup, but Mama Roo clearly finds the American and American adjacent choices the funniest, because she volleys hard with Cher, Naomi Campbell, and Sofia Vergara, while Valeria Marini and Gloria Macabagal Arroyo are the clear worst two of the week, with Jim Carrey and Judy Garland only getting a couple of laughs. On the runway though, Velstat attempts to redeem their Snatch game, while Dark Lurker only succeeds in proving how she made this episode her bitch. Based on tonight's performances, Velstat, Nashandra, The Pursuer, Dark Lurker, Fume Knight, and Alana, Squalid Queen. You represent the tops and bottoms of the week. But I want to hear from you. Who should go home tonight, and why? Fume Knight immediately says Velstat, his attitude doesn't represent the values of a winner, and clearly he's been coasting the competition. Nishandra says Alana, Squalid Queen, because she feels her younger sister has a lack of professionalism, is a little too immature for this competition, shown through her awful snatch game. Velstat, the Royal Aegis, says The Pursuer, as in the lineup, she's the strongest competition. Alana, Squalid Queen, says The Pursuer, as she caught them sleeping during the workroom in a previous challenge, though The Pursuer denies this claim, stating Alana the Squalid Queen as her answer as she's not ready for this competition, and choosing someone to go home because of alleged sleeping only proves her immaturity. Dark Lurker dogpiles on Alana, stating that because she's had a win in the competition, bombing this challenge looks worse for her, but Alana claps back, saying that at least she and the Pursuer have wins. Velstat has nothing. Rue ultimately decides, though. Dark Lurker, congratulations! You're the winner of this week's challenge and the second queen to win two challenges this season. Nishandra, you've got competition, honey! Nishandra, Fume Knight, you're safe. Great job this week. Velstat, you're safe. You may step to the back of the stage. Alana cannot believe her eyes. Velstat, who clearly did worse in the challenge, being sent to the back of the stage while she has to face off against the pursuer who's just coming off of a win? My dears, the time has come for you to lip sync for your life. The pursuer cracks her knuckles. She's not afraid. After all, Alana's been sleeping on the pursuer's lip syncing skills. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. The song is Fantasy by Mariah Carey, the pursuer immediately feeling her Mariah fantasy, taking her time, facing the judges, lip syncing every word. Alana is doing the same, but it's clear from her mouth that she's lip syncing the backing vocals, while the pursuer hits every Mariah moment. The whistle tones, the ad libs, pursuer's been listening to this on repeat for years. It's the best lip sync performance of the season thus far. That is how you perform a lip sync, ladies. The Pursuer, Shantae you stay. Alana, Squalid Queen, you've had a ball of a time here, but you let these other bitches get to you and you have to be confident in yourself. Now, sashay away. 
Episode 9, the queens stride back into the workroom, Alana finally out of the competition. Velstat is pissed off, as once again Fume Knight and Sir Alon gang up on him to say that he should have been in the bottom over Alana. His snatch game was worse, and he only saved himself with a runway. It's brutal, the Lost Sinner and the Rotten both coming to Velstat's defense. The party here is being split. Which makes things interesting, as after a new day in the workroom, the queens are tasked with coming up with a girl group number for the hit new song, Esther Shot Into My Heart. Each queen is tasked with a 15 second verse that they must write and perform, alongside group choreo from our extra special guest choreographer, the Flexile Sentry. In the performance, Dark Lurker takes center stage, slaying her part and proving that she's now a real force to be reckoned with. But a good portion of the other girls are keeping up, especially Velstat, who's had a fire lit under his ass to prove his haters wrong, and Sin the Slumbering Dragon, who breathes poison fire all over the stage in a pussy Konyo way, not a dangerous way, as she dedicates her verse to overcoming the adversity of losing her closest friend in the competition, Alana. On the struggle bus though, and perhaps it's karma, Sir Alon and the Fume Knight, allies of Broom Tower, are failures in this girl group number. The Rotten, Nishandra, the Lost Sinner. Great job this week, you're all safe. The rest of you represent the tops and the bottoms of the week. Velstat, Dark Lurker, fabulous effort, you both deserve kudos for your work. But Sin the Slumbering Dragon, congratulations! You're the winner of this week's challenge. You've won a ticket to join the Rat Covenant. You may all step to the back of the stage. Fume Knight, Sir Alon, the Pursuer. You represent the bottoms of the week. But the Pursuer, you were still fantastic. We had to nitpick, you're safe. Velstat watches on eagerly, reveling in the fact that Karma came around and smacked this pair in the face. While well, Sin is just happy she was able to fulfill her purpose, snatch a win, and redeem Alana in her eyes, a real result for the good guys this episode. Fume Knight, Sir Alon, the time has come for you to lip sync for your life. The pair look to each other, they may be upset they're both in the bottom, but they are the type to fight for their spot. Good luck, and the fuck up. The lip sync song is Material Girl by Madonna and Fume Knight vibes with the song way more than his previous lip sync. Sir Alon smiles to the judges, serving face face face, body and all, another day, another slay, while Fume Knight is delivering the original 1984 Madonna music video choreography, before pulling off a wig to reveal a beautiful blonde Madonna do that only slips slightly as the song progresses. Sir Alon keeps up, enunciating his vocals. It's close, closer than you'd think. Ru takes a moment. Sir Alon, Shantae, you stay. There's an awkward pause as Sir Alon shuffles to the back of the stage. The rest of the girls shocked. Fume Knight outperformed him. This is a double Shantae, right? Fume Knight, I'll breathe in your fumes anytime. But for now, sachet away. And the moment Rue utters those words, it's cold in the studio. Fume Knight was genuinely convinced it would be a double stay, but he walks away, head held high, refusing to acknowledge Velstat as he turns around and says his entrance line to Rue. Mama, kudos for saying that. For spilling. Episode 10, the queens return to the workroom following the elimination of the Fume Knight. Velstat satisfied to see his nemesis fallen, though Sir Alon glares daggers at him. Sin smiles to herself, though Dark Lurk is a little in her feelings, as she felt she did the best last episode. But the Lost Sinner points out that Sin's improvement is what netted her the win, and you can't expect to win every challenge every week. To which Dark Lurker simply says, Bet. Though as the girls are de-dragging, Sir Alon is comforted by the Pursuer. And by comforted, I mean they went back to the same hotel room, if you know what I'm saying. It's a new day in the workroom, and Sin and Dark Lurker have been chosen by Mama Roo as the top two of the previous week to be team captains for a new drag exercise commercial made to expand your soul level. 
Dark Lurker picks The Rotten, Velstat, and The Lost Sinner for her team, leaving Sin with Nishandra, The Pursuer, and Sir Alon. Team Dark Lurker has a good performance, everyone doing well, with The Rotten being the overall big standout. They showcase some great squats, and The Rotten does some cleaver swings that really get the judges moving. Team Sin also does well, Nishandra and Sir Alon being the clear runaway successes as they always are, and Sin does great too. But the pursuer absolutely chokes, too distracted by Sir Alon bench pressing four hollows to focus. And on the runway, category is Kaftan, and everyone does great, with Sir Alon and Nishandra slaying alongside Velstat from the opposing team. This week, Rue announces, you worked together as teams, but tonight, you will be judged as teams. The winning advert belongs to... Team Dark Lurker, congratulations. Nishandra is pissed, knowing that the pursuer doing bad was the sole reason their team didn't win today, and she glares at him through critiques, and in Untucked, attacks Sin for bothering to choose the pursuer, and how stupid she was for making that call for her team. It's ugly, to say the least. But this week's winner, it isn't Dark Lurker, it's the Rotten! Congratulations, my dear, snatching your second win of the season. Your whole team is safe from elimination. Team Sin, you were the losing team, so you are all in the bottom this week. Sir Alon, you were the best of the worst. You're safe. Nishandra, this was your first fall. Don't let that happen again, my dear. You're safe. Sin, Slumbering Dragon, as team captain, you didn't manage your assets and were outshone by your teammates. The Pursuer, you were too busy gawking at someone else's assets. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck. And don't fuck it up. The lip sync song is Super Freaky Girl by Nicki Minaj, and the pursuer, breathing in and out, begins to lip sync the house down boots, mama. Sin does the same, but Nishandra's volatile outburst is still sticking in her mind from Untucked. They both perform to the best of their ability, feeling like true super freaky girls, and it's a really good lip sync. Rue then makes her decision, but before she can speak, Wait, wait, wait. Sin raises her hand. I feel extremely grateful for this opportunity. I've had an absolute blast, and I even won last week. But something about this environment, a wing gestures to Nishandra, is too toxic. I'm going home. The gasps, the shock, the <gasps> As it is written, so it shall be done. The Pursuer. Shantae, you stay. He gives Sin a big hug, the pair wishing each other well. They've always been on good terms. Sin, the slumbering dragon, you did your house proud. Take care of your mental health and spread your poisonous flames across the world, baby. Now, sashay away. Episode 11, the queens are back in the workroom, Sin having just quit the competition, and already, Nishandra's talking shit. She was about to get sent home anyway because the pursuer beat her in the lip sync, she says. But unlike earlier in the competition, nobody is listening to her anymore. Nishandra, the drama, is being blocked out, much to her chagrin. Sir Alon is comforting the pursuer, pissed off at how Nishandra treated him, to the point where even he's ignoring her but they can't ignore a bat out of hell for long because it's time for the reading challenge, and after some scathing remarks, Nishandra and Dark Lurker find themselves as joint winners. For today's maxi challenge, the queens must create viral TikTok parodies on the best fashion souls moments from Dark Souls 2, and this is where the pursuer thrives, appearing behind people to attack them with advertisements, while Dark Lurker uses their mystical gothic drag to bring a touch of mystique to her ad. Sir Alon and the Rotten hold their own, while Nishandra, well, she cracks like an egg and just isn't very funny. It's almost like a mask has been pulled off, and she's completely different, more egocentric. Velstat and the Lost Sinner are the weakest, though, 
one defaulting to jokes against the Fume Knight, who has been gone for a few episodes at this point, the other having been away in the Lost Bastille for so long that she's just not hip with the kids. But on the runway, Dark Lurker and the Lost Sinner slay the Butch Queen realness category. Good for her, good for her. The Rotten. You're safe. As for my top three, I've made some decisions. Dark Lurker, congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge. Pursuer, it was so close. By a hair, you could have taken it, but the runway mattered. Surilon, good job this week. You're safe. Nashandra, the Lost Sinner. Velstat, you are the bottoms of the week. Velstat, you've had success in this competition, but we need to see growth. If you're not winning challenges, you're not winning the show. I'm sorry, my dear, but you're up for elimination. The Lost Sinner, you've yet to make a name for yourself outside of the Rusical, but that runway is stunning, Mama. Nashandra, last week I told you not to land here again, yet here you are. Nashandra, I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. Velstat, the Royal Aegis, Nashandra. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. The tension is high, as I'd Rather Go Blind by Edda James comes on. It's a soulful song, one that really requires a connection to the lyrics. No tricks or dips are going to save you, and both lip syncers know this. Nishandra, though, she's a little crazy, a little manic while Velstat is thinking about his liege, King Vendrick, how he could avenge his honor and defeat the woman who pushed him out of the Dranglaic drag scene, all he has to do is, Nishandra, Shantae, you stay. Velstat's world crumbles. His momentum halted, his life irrevocably changed. He couldn't do it. He couldn't take her down. Sachet, away. It's episode 12, and the top six remaining queens file into the workroom. And it's very clearly Nishandra versus the rest of the cast. While everyone else has been bonding in their own way, she's saying how she could send any of them home in a lip sync, and she was ready to do so. Even though Dark Lurker points out that Vilstat was doing better than her, she just got lucky she had a better track record. Where's that winner energy now? It's as if Dark Lurker is gaining power from Nishandra's pain, which is reflected in this week's challenge as Ru announces a design challenge based on the runway of the first sin. Create a garment that reflects that original sin as best you can and wow the judges. And Dark Lurker is ready, design challenges are her bread and butter and she nails it alongside Sir Alon. On the other end of the spectrum, the Rotten is frustrated as she can't overcome these design challenges, and looking around, her outfit is the worst of the group. A very haute glue. Nashandra, the Lost Sinner, and the Pursuer are all on a similar level, but the stoning work for the Pursuer is just immaculate in presentation compared to the other two, who are making too much with too little time. Another gown for Nashandra, and another accessory for the Lost Sinner. Ladies, I've made my decision. Dark Lurker, once again, congratulations, you're on fire and the winner of this week's challenge. After such a slow, rough start for Dark Lurker, being able to snatch two wins in a row is a massive confidence boost. Suralon, the Pursuer, great job this week, you're safe. The Lost Sinner, Nishandra, the Rotten, you represent the bottoms of the week. The Rotten, we love your personality, but you're the clear worst of the week. I'm sorry, my dear, for the third time, you're up for elimination. Nishandra, Lost Sinner, you both have potential, I can see it in your eyes, I can feel it in your bones. But one of you is losing steam fast. Nishandra, I'm sorry, my dear, but you are up for elimination. The Lost Sinner, you're safe, but this is your last chance. To the back of the stage, please. We are watching someone spiral in real time. Nishandra, who was once on top of this competition, is collapsing fast. And as she turns to see the Rotten, well, she knows she can beat him. The Rotten, Nishandra, 
The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck. And don't fuck it up. And then the song comes on. The Rotten's eyes are light. It's Freakum Dress by Beyonce. And the Rotten is in a free-flowing hot glue garment that allows for movement. While the Chandra's in a constricting gown. It's a dance song. It needs movement, precision, dips and flips. And Nashandra is trying her best in her dress. She's fighting. She knows she can win. Her track record is better than the Rotten's. She deserves this. She knows she's being kept. Who cares what the Rotten does? And then the Rotten does a forward flip into a split, bouncing her chocho across the runway like she's walking a fucking dog. The Rotten, Shantae you stay. The Rotten breathes a sigh of relief and then pussy pounds her way to the back of the stage. Nishandra, you were the favorite, but you orchestrated your own downfall. And if your peers hate you, how are you gonna get the fans to love you? Now, sachet away. She stalks to the end of the runway, turns back and just goes, you've made a mistake, and steps off into the night. A short lock for the finale taken out just two episodes prior. It's episode 13, the cheering of the top five as they enter the workroom is palpable. The evil has been defeated and they can just enjoy their final episode before the live finale. The pursuer can't help but feel motivated, wanting to snatch one last win to keep Dark Lurker from storming ahead. While the Lost Sinner is just happy to be here, She's seen the power of everyone's drag after all, and she's really happy to see the Pursuer, a drag queen from her own bar, succeeding in the competition. Sir Alon is happy to help prop the Pursuer up as well, and the Rotten is just cool being this season's lip sync assassin. For the final mini challenge, it's time to read a bitch with puppets, because everybody loves puppets, and the Lost Sinner finally finds herself with a win, as she reads the house down and puts on a fierce puppet performance, giving her a mini challenge win to push her into the final challenge of the season. For the main maxi challenge, it's the Rumix. To RuPaul's This Is Our Country, Drangleic Edition. As is customary, the Rumix is top tier. Everybody gives it their all, not a bad person in sight, it's just some had a little more energy than others. And on the main stage, RuPaul reveals her decision. Dark Lurker, for the third time in a row, congratulations, you're the winner of this week's challenge. And the first queen advancing to our lip sync smackdown for the crown. The Pursuer, you are the second best this week, and you will also be advancing to our lip sync smackdown for the crown. She turns to the other three, the Rotten, Lost Sinner, Sir Alon, and her eyes land on... The Rotten, you are safe, and the third queen advancing to our lip sync smackdown for the crown. Which means the Lost Sinner, Sir Alon, you are the bottom two of the week. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. The song starts, it's Whenever, Whenever by Shakira. The two performers definitely not used to this specific genre. The Lost Sinner knows if she can pull ahead, she could sneak into the finale, while Sir Alon is hoping his win earlier in the season can pull him ahead. They both do their best Shakira impressions, it's not the best lip sync in the world, and the result is decided. Sir Alon, Shantae you stay. You will be advancing to the lip sync Smackdown for the crown. The Lost Sinner, my dear, you may not have won a challenge, but you were a joy to have around. And I get the feeling we haven't seen the last of you yet. Now, sachet away. It's the finale, episode 14. The four remaining queens are all brought out in front of a live audience of Drangleic's finest. A lip sync smackdown for the crown to determine our winner. The matchups have been decided. Sir Alon will face the Rotten in round one. Dark Lurker will face the Pursuer in round two. Sir Alon, the Rotten, the time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Assume the position. They take their place, the stage is set, good luck, and don't fuck it up. The song starts, 
It's Toy by Netta. Serolon immediately begins to reveal to a small suit of armor, while the Rotten uses her facial expressions through her cage to have a bit of fun. This is a song with a little bit of chicken to it, and the joy is radiated through one of the lip syncers, while the other is taking it a bit too seriously, failing to understand the assignment. And ultimately, it is going to cost them. The Queen moving on to the final lip sync is... The Rotten, Shantae You Stay. Congratulations, go and get prepared for the lip sync for the crown. Seralon, you have been a fabulous queen this season, but now is not your time. I must ask you to sashay away. Seralon looks defeated, but bows in honor. Ultimately, the right person went through, and he'll be at peace with that. On to round two, Dark Lurker, the Pursuer. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Assume the position. The pair take their spots on the stage, Dark Lurker fighting for the crown they feel is theirs, the Pursuer knowing they're all that stands between their opponent and victory. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. The song is Love on the Brain by Rihanna. A slower song right up the Pursuer's alley, it sells emotion. But Dark Lurker, who we've never seen lip sync before, pulls out all the stops. Connecting with the song, eye contact with Rue, playing to the audience, and the pursuer matches her, nay, pushes past her. It's a back and forth between the pair without any physical contact. This will be an impossible decision. Rue stands up on stage and says, the queen moving on to the final lip sync is... Shantae, you both stay. Dark Lurker, the Pursuer, you both will be moving on to the lip sync for the crown. It's a gag. The two best lip syncers of the season joining the lip sync assassin, the Rotten, in the final three. It feels correct. As the queens hurry off, it's time to announce this season's Miss Congeniality. The votes were tallied, and Manus, Mother of the Abyss, is here as our current reigning Miss Congeniality from Season 1, to tell you all that Season 2's Miss Congeniality is... The Covetous Demon! The curves and rolls are victorious. You have won a 5,000 soul voucher at any store in Drangleic of your choice. Now, The Rotten, Dark Lurker, The Pursuer. The time has come for you to lip sync for the crown. Good luck, and don't fuck it up. The song begins, It's Heaven by DJ Sammy, a Eurobeat anthem for the ages. Dark Lurker takes to her side of the stage using her cloning ability to create a backup dancer. The Pursuer, having stabbed someone backstage, uses their cursed power to create billowing black smoke that enhances all of her movements. And the Rotten kiss the guest judge, so that's fun. But only one queen can reign supreme. To announce the winner of season two of Drag Souls, let's bring back your reigning queen, Gaping Dragon. Gaping, hi, how has your time been reigning as the drag queen of Lordran? Well, Rue, I ate my season like I eat my meals, with my teeth. <laughs> uh, can't laugh too much, might have acid reflux. Whichever queen wins, just know I'm better than you and I always will be the first crowned queen of drag souls. The time has come. The Rotten. Dark Lurker. The Pursuer. The winner of Drag Souls Season 2. Dranglaic's next drag superstar is... Dark Lurker! You are a winner, baby! Your late game dominance just couldn't be denied. Now prance, my queen. Prance, I say. For you track record gays out there, here are the official stat sheets. I had Canon Pursuer in second place and Rotten in third place, and what a season that was. Dark Lurker was actually designed to be a sort of boss character coming from the Abyss, and yet she ended up winning. And so, that is it for Drag Souls Season 2.
And that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I have a lot of fun making these every single time. My next subscriber goal is 35,000 subscribers, but I'll make a deal with you guys. If we can get to 30,000 subscribers, I will do Drag Souls 3 based on Dark Souls 3, and if we hit 35,000 subscribers, I'll do an All-Stars season. So, Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please be sure to parry that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my future content. If you're still here an hour later, you are amazing. And uh, thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. It's absolutely insane that I've got that many and I just really wanna keep making videos for you guys and just keep making content that is entertaining and that I enjoy making. So, yeah. My social media links are on screen now. Feel free to follow where you feel comfortable. I recommend my, recommend my Twitter, my Blue Sky, or my Discord. Um, a massive shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you for supporting me for another month. You guys are amazing. And a shout out to my YouTube channel members. You guys get early access to my Tuesday videos, and you get a shout out in the description and at the end of videos. In fact, this is going to be the normal setup going forwards. I will be phasing out my patron at the end of of June. So thank you everyone for watching. I will see you guys next time. And once again, go watch some more Drag Race. Adios.